What's up legends? Welcome back to another video and welcome back to this very video friendly little studio right here to talk about this AMG GTR. My first time experiencing a GTR. I spent a fair amount of time in GTSs but never in the GTRs. And I put a story up on my Instagram a few days ago saying that I'd be in Geneva, Switzerland where I am right now and if any subscribers had cars that they should let me know and then Jordan who has his own um, car wash spot here in Geneva I'll put all the Instagrams down below sent me a little message to come film his AMG GTR so here we are today and we're gonna have a look around this and then go for a little drive but I am a big fan of the way these things look no idea how they drive or what they feel like inside but I've always thought these are pretty cool now obviously the AMG GT line, there are loads of different variants. It came in not as a replacement of the SLS, but kind of a follow on of the same ethos, but it was less powerful, I believe, or maybe around the same power, but at least cheaper than the SLS when it came out, the original AMG GT. There was the GT, the GTS, the GTC, then there's the GTR, the GTR Pro, and now the Black Series. So the GTR Pro kind of uh, between this and the Black Series, but overall it means you basically have a variant of this model for whatever you may desire. Now, this one, the GTI, I think is a really nice balance and an interesting price point these days. Um, they have depreciated a little bit, which means that you can get them at some pretty interesting deals. So, really, really cool looking car, obviously twin turbocharged V8, which is mounted in the front well kind of like front mid engine so it's quite far back in um, the hood here uh, which is a massive hood these have a really particular driving style so you're sat on the rear wheel basically so you're sat literally right there right in front of the rear wheels this one is finished in this really cool matte green obviously with the logo as well on the side and this car participated in the torque rally which is my friend Misha's rally I love the details like the slightly tinted front lights, looks really nice and all the piano black finishes around the car. So compared to the AMG GT, the whole front grille has been changed, the front bumper, sorry, um, with aerodynamic details all over the place. So this car is really, really quick. When it did its first Nürburgring lap time, it really impressed a lot of people and it's just a more track focused um, more powerful and just kind of more extreme version of the AMG GT platform. So you've got new rims here finished in matte black with the silver kind of pinstriping around there and these really cool looking gold ceramic brakes um, which are really, really nice. I believe standard as well on the AMG GTR. And the more you go around it, one of the easiest ways to tell this is an AMG GTR is through the wing back here. So the wing as well finished in piano black. Uh, you did have AMG GT's the Edition 1s, which had a little wing, um, but mainly you can tell that it's a GTR through that rear wing. They made a convertible version of this as well, limited to 750 pieces worldwide, units, pieces, whatever you want to call it. The rear is well known for this big center-mounted rear exhaust, which looks awesome, gives that V8 grumble, but actually there are two other little exhausts hidden away See, in the corners under these little carbon fiber heat shields. Um, so that's kind of cool. Once you see them, it's kind of hard to unsee them. Alcantara. Alcantara touches all around. So the steering wheel is finished in Alcantara. You've got the yellow pinstriping. And what I love the most about this is it's got these carbon bucket seats, which look really nice. Also, quite a lot of weight saving through these compared to the original, which are still buckets, but much more luxurious seats and a roll cage as well. Really nice spec, you don't see that many with this. Um, the Alcantara in the center of the seats with the leather going around the rest of it. A really nice interior on these. It's actually still got the protection, plastic protection right here. Um, this car must be pretty new. It's a combination of a digital dash and obviously analog. So with the rev counter and um, your speedo being analog. And then, you know, the classic kind of Mercedes center console right here. 
and screen. One thing which was introduced on the GTR is this traction control kind of turning knob which you can go through here and that will allow you to really vary between different levels of traction. Really nice if you're kind of getting to know the car, getting to experience it a bit more, you can really dial that to basically exactly what suits your driving style best. All of the center screen controls are controlled through here and then this funky little um, gear selector, obviously dual clutch um, gearbox on this, so no actual gear shifter. This is to control your volume, whether you go into manual or automatic, auto start stop, exhaust valve button, suspension, traction off, auto start stop, and these are your driving modes. Individual, comfort, sport, sports plus, and race. Individual being to your own setup, and the others are pretty self-explanatory. So yeah, really, really cool to see this, but I think it's about time. I know I really want to because I have been waiting to experience some of these for a long time to hit the road. Actually, right before we go, I've got the key now right here, which also has a nice Alcantara finish. And you ready? Oh, it's got that V8 grumble. This is like a German muscle car. You hear the difference there if you open the valves? And then here. Yeah. Listen to that grumble through those exhausts and that secret little hidden one right there. All right, legends, we are at the wheel of the AMG GTR. And when you hop in, it is a pretty particular place to be at first. I'm not gonna lie, I'm in comfort and auto right now, just kind of to get used to the body of the car because yeah, it's, it's particular. It's not like a 911 or even kind of one of those mid-engine Ferraris, a 458 or 488, where you can kind of hop in, or an R8 V10, let's say, and the visibility is, you know, pretty easy. Um, the, the way the car feels and where you're placed in the car feels familiar, whereas this is kind of its own beast. So it's pretty wide, and especially you're just really sat on those rear wheels, and you're really sat so far kind of behind. So you need to drive it, in this kind of new way where you turn late into a corner to kind of swing that huge front end around and get used to being so far in the car but yeah the, also the front windscreen for example having driven the perf and driving uh, the scud quite often which have pretty slanted windscreens when you get into this i then realize that this is like a pretty upright perpendicular windscreen obviously not quite as extreme but kind of more of that g-wagon kind of feel of the glass is right in front of you and then you need to get used to that feeling of knowing that the rear tire is literally like there and you've got the rear um, window right behind you as well this one's kind of blocked by that roll cage as well so you can't see all that much first thing you kind of want to get used to is the way the car feels then all the rest is actually pretty mercedes familiar right so the way the paddles feel the way the steering wheel feels that thick alcantara uh, amg steering wheel um, and all of the you know buttons and all of that that's familiar so that's kind of nice but it is definitely just this feeling at first of okay this is new i'm sure once you get used to it it's really pleasant and driving it around like this i mean you can hear how kind of tamed quiet it is the suspension obviously with this being the harder version more hardcore kind of track ready setup for the car does get some getting used to it's pretty hard um but i'm sure you could kind of drive this around if you wanted to these seats are really nice they hold you in nicely but you are low down in the car because obviously not much padding and you want to be lower down kind of better sense of gravity for the car not that my weight's going to make much of a difference but you know what i mean let's hop out of oh, first of all let's put the exhaust on let's go into sport and let's hop out of auto so into manual okay instantly you can hear that v8 a bit more Okay, so you're not getting the pops and bangs back just yet. The gearbox still is, you know, it's aggressive, but still giving you a little bit of leeway. I imagine this sport mode is kind of in between what you'll have in Sport Plus and Comfort. So it's like, okay, fella, I know you want a bit more noise. I know you're looking to have a bit more fun, but let's not go crazy just yet. So let's go straight into Sport Plus, no longer in Sport and see how much that has changed. When you come up to roundabouts like these, you need to remember that you've got this huge front hood which can poke out. So completely different to like a 911, let's say, where you've got a really short front and 
you're right in the middle of the car. This is different. Already it sounds so much better. It's more plus. Oh, yes. Okay, this is what it's about. <laughs> okay, so now you get the pops and bangs. Yeah, I mean, this is this is it. I mean, to be honest, I would I would remain in Sport Plus pretty much all the time. The gear shifts now are pretty instantaneous. I really like the feel of the panels as well. They kind of have this little wrap around um, for your fingers, so yeah, they feel really nice. You can just leave them kind of pressed on there. A lot more torque than, for example, in the SLS. I was lucky enough to drive an SLS. The SLS with it being a naturally aspirated engine, a lot less torquey, so you really needed to rev it out a lot more. This it feels like it's got a lot more potential on the low end, but tell you what, it makes you aware instantly that it's nearly 600 brake horsepower straight to the rear wheels with a slightly lighter rear end. It feels more balanced than you think when you would just look at it, because when you look at it, you just think, okay, all the weight's gonna be on the front and the rear's just gonna be floating around like a butterfly. But in the end, because the engine is actually kind of disguised and further back than you would think, the weight distribution in here is actually much better than I was expecting. So you don't feel too much like it's front heavy and nothing in the rear. So your mind is more playing tricks on you with the way the car looks compared to how it actually feels. I mean, the proof's in the pudding, right? This is a super successful um, race car in uh, all of the various race series with these. So the weight distribution's obviously been thought of. It is fast. It is very fast. And that German car way where it makes the noise and it kind of does it without making a fuss. So all of a sudden you look down at the speed you're doing and you're like, oh crap, okay, I'm, I'm going pretty fast. This one being right hand drive as well, driving in a left hand drive country, you kind of need to keep that in mind. I really like the gearbox because it gives you the noise of the shift, but you don't feel it that much. Uh, it's not too brutal, so they've managed to kind of walk that line nicely. Okay, let's give it a go in the last mode. Let's go race. Now, race is obviously going to be the most hardcore, so probably faster shifts. I can already feel, I think the steering's gotten a little bit heavier. Let's see what this has got. with the with the sound of these things and this is arguably one of the best sounding turbo engines and it gives me hope for what turbo engines could be because a lot of other cars you know you're driving and it's like oh really like all of the characters gone this they nailed it and it I think is one of these generations so let's say AMG GTR and SLS Sorry to keep talking about it, but it's because I drove an SLS on literally these roads right here. Comparing the two is interesting because when you compare, let's say, a, a naturally aspirated 911 to a turbo 911, there is such a difference. Whereas here, yes, there's obviously a difference. This has got more low end. It's more of a torquey engine. The sound is maybe a little bit more synthetic, but they've managed to bridge that gap a lot better than other companies, which is, yeah, really interesting to see. So it still feels raw. It's still got that yeah muscle car feel that you want despite it having all the latest technology and also that turbocharged essence and the advantages that turbocharged engines give you so the better fuel consumption the low end grunt yeah it's really really cool. i see why these have been so successful and obviously they produce quite a lot of them so there was some depreciation that came in but it means now for what you can pick these up at for you know some really good deals what a car. I mean, you are getting so much car. You're also getting the lower running costs of a German make like this. So obviously, I mean, it's not going to be cheap to run, but it will be less than, let's say, a Lamborghini Huracan or a Ferrari 488 or any of those cars. So overall, I mean, this is a great package. And once you get used to it, and see how it can become an addictive feel to have this kind of raw and grunty personality in your car and uh, the driving style you need to adapt for it with this long hood. Now, I was trying to think of where this sits in the lineup of AMG GTs before coming to, to test drive it. And the best I could think was comparing it to 911s. So for example, the standard AMG GT 
that's your Carrera, right? Your AMG GTS would be like your Carrera S. This would be your GT3. The AMG GTR Pro would be your GT3 RS. And then the Black Series would be your GT2 RS. Does that make sense? Kind of. So this is kind of like that GT3 aspect of you can drive it if you want to every day. Most people won't. But it will make you feel alive every time you do it. You whack it into race mode and you need to respect it, right? It's not a car you can just hop in, put your foot down coming out of a corner. We've got 600 horsepower to the rear wheels and it is a slightly lighter rear end. That will bite your head off if you, uh, if you don't respect it. But it makes you respect it. It's not like unpredictable in the way that it will do that. So certain cars that will bite your head off do it all of a sudden. This I feel like would more let you know that it's coming and it's about to do that and bite your head off. It still amazes me that through an Instagram post I'm lucky enough to be able to test drive these cars. So Jordan who's next to me right now, thank You're you. Um, it's super cool to be able to just you know come here, test drive these cars and for me AMG GTR, my first time experiencing one of these, I really really like it. It's cool, it's completely different ethos to like the Hurricane Performante I drove recently. Um, you know, that is still much more of a uh, sort of hairs, uh, goosebumpy kind of car that you'll drive, Italian character, um, a little more raw even than this and that naturally aspirated V10. But I mean, it's in a different price league as well. This is that German car, a kind of badass German car that's had too much beer for breakfast and wants to bite your head off. So we have switched back again. Jordan is back at the wheel of uh, the supercar with the AMG GTR. This is so cool also to be in passenger. It's got some real presence even as a passenger. It's always cool kind of comparing from this side after it. And it does feel weird being in a left-hand drive country sitting on this side and not having a steering wheel in front of me. And then the view out of the mirrors is awesome. See with the wing which is just passing. But anyway, anyways, really cool to be back in, uh, in an AMG GT and testing for the first time the GTR. I uh, really appreciated it. So thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't hesitate to subscribe or give the video a thumbs up. It does really help the channel. And if you also have a car that you'd like to see featured on the channel, just send me a message on my Instagram or in the mail that will be down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you very soon. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.